<laughs> I'm gonna immediately start this off with a horribly derailing, unrelated thing. <laughs> Let's try this guy. Uh, I don't normally go for characters like this. I didn't play tag team racing, so, like, yeah, we'll just play the chicken man. Um, like, the whole commentating shtick, that it reminds me of... Did anyone play Ratchet Gladiator? It's the only Ratchet and Clank game I played. Which is, like, the worst fucking one to start on, I'm pretty sure, where it's just like, go do mini-games. It wasn't bad, though. I was having fun. It's basically just a shooter, an arena shooter. Anyway, um... Not the derailing tangent I was going to talk about. The derailing tangent I was going to talk about. I recently watched Reef Stalked. This is a sequel to the other movie called Reef. Both of which are funded by the Queensland government. And both of them seem to be telling you, don't go to fucking Australia. You will get stalked and murdered by a shark. Or just murdered. It's <laughs> a great, great work for the tourism board there. Uh, just stay the fuck out. Don't come in. You'll get shot. I'm playing this on hard mode because I need to get my little star, and I'm pretty sure that I'm just going to get bodied. So. Anyway. It was one of the, like, there's nothing wrong with the movie, don't get me wrong, everyone does everything wrong, but the ending, oh my god, it's just, well, there's a lot of issues which make me genuinely terrified of Australia, oh fuck, see, it's shit like this, and then they just punch you while you're down, like, you, you just sit there and you think, oh, okay, I'm going to play the, the thing and I can consistently at uh, easy and at uh, hard mode, uh, medium difficulty jump that wall. Oh, now it's hard mode, they decided to just fuck me and then that small setback revolves on people dogpiling on me, all of their missiles and bombs, which makes it so that you're consistently eight. No, no chicken, man. I won't choke on the chicken. Anyway, like, it makes you genuinely terrified of Australia and Australian attitude towards death, which is, like, somewhat reasonable, but, like, at first, and then it's like, oh, okay then. And I guess it's just the way that the movie is shot, but, like, it genuinely disturbs me. So, spoilers for The Reef Stalked, which is a shark movie that for some reason decides to open up with someone being drowned in a bathtub. <laughs> but we'll get back to that in a minute. Uh, basically, every time a character dies in the, that movie, they show a big emotional, oh my god, they died, oh, it's so terrible, life is awful, and they're all sobbing and shit. And then it's just like, people just kind of like, bounce from one traumatic experience to another in this movie and it just makes me feel like holy shit the fact that everyone just accepts it as a fact of life like oh you know like in this movie's universe like oh just terrible shit happens to me all of the time and there's nothing i can do about it is quite horrifying it makes you think holy shit the universe they live in is terrible and if you just think is this just australia <laughs> you will feel terrible because at first I thought maybe it's the same person who survived the first movie of Reef, but no, they seem to- Oh, again, fucking just fuck me over. Uh... What did he say? And I don't care. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, he feels terrible. Everything is terrible. A loss? This is unprecedented, folks. I feel like the, like, input 
windows for jumping, like the R1 at the right time, gets narrowed for harder modes, but I might be wrong. Uh, yeah, so beginning of the movie, big spoilers. The sister of the protagonist gets fucking drowned in a bathtub and they kind of just leave it like, oh, well, you know, I left her alone with a man for more than five minutes. So, I mean, it's almost like it's my fault. The way they just hand wave this at the beginning of the movie almost robs the man of his autonomy and his guilt and the consequences where they're just like yeah he killed her in a really brutal way for absolutely no reason and then he just goes to jail and he's just out of the movie and he's never mentioned again it's just like oh there's no anger towards him that's shown it's just oh it's so tragic it was not prevented you know it there's no way we could have prevented this it was really just bad luck that she was on her own in a house with this guy and you know it's not like men have control over their ability to not fucking drown every woman they meet and murder and rape constantly oh well never mind not much we can do about that silly me shouldn't have gone to walmart <laughs> left her alone with a man because <laughs> you know there's like a fucking 30% to 50% RNG roll you do every time you leave him alone with him. It's like, fucking hell, that's so dark. Anyway, he disappears, then there's a time skip and the protagonist leaves and comes back after traveling the world. is not present for her little sister's funeral, because that's, that's And, like, all this shit. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. It just starts this precedent of person dies, everyone is markedly sad and then suddenly oh yeah they're dead and it's just like everyone moves on I guess because the time skips aren't very like they, they tell you but it just feels like the characters look the same and act the same so you just sit there and think everyone's just weirdly chill with something that just happened and it's maybe just better framing could be yeah, whatever Anyway, one of them gets, they're going out on a strip and because it's a shark movie, one of their friends gets horribly murked by a shark directly in front of them. And they're all crying and sobbing and like panicking and shit. And like, they save each other and they're crying and panicking and sobbing and shit. But it's the ending of the movie which just feels horrendously inappropriate. Where the, the, the survivors escape the shark. They hold a memorial, they have a little memorial plaque made for the sister who got drowned in a bathtub and someone who got murdered by a shark and the plaque. Everything else is nice and the plaque, no word of the lies, says like, Diver Sisters Forever. And I felt like, I was kind of like laughing out of horrible shock about how fucking appropriate that is for someone to write that as like because the little sister it for context is never really shown as being a diving enthusiast like the others are so one of them dies doing what they love diving and you know getting sharked not what they love but like you know diving is a passion it's not really elaborated upon that the young sister likes diving and the fact that she died drowning in a bathtub it feels like you could have put anything else and it would have felt better than that. Like, oh, well, she's diving in heaven now. She fucking drowned. That's so fucked up, dude. Oh, my God. <laughs> Holy shit. That's like saying... That's like writing on, like, Paul Walker's grave. Oh, well, he's driving in heaven now. He died in a car crash. Holy shit. Like, oh, my God. Well, no, it would it not, because Paul Walker's a driving enthusiast, so it kind of made sense, right? But, like, it's not established that she likes diving or has a relationship with the other fatality in this movie. So you're sat there like, oh, my fucking God, that's so terrible. Holy shit. And I was kind of, like, laughing out of horrible, like, shock that they would do that, it's like, what the hell? 
Oh my god, they should have better like signposted that she was into diving too, because it's like, you know, like, it just feels so wrong to say like someone who drowned. Oh yeah, she just loved diving. Fucking hell! Like, oh my god, maybe it's just me and I'm drawing these parallel lines that are like, were un obviously unintentional. Oh, oh no! Oh, because otherwise it's a nice ending to the movie. Aside from that black, you could have written anything. Anything. And you chose that. Also, for some reason, the Australian or Queensland government seems to fucking love funding movies that are basically, like, come to Australia and get sharked or murdered because, uh, men can't control themselves and will probably try and drown you in a bathtub or rape you. And you're like, uh, you always do one way, you know, like, most people in Australia are nice and there's no sharks. Oh, well, I guess it was a horror movie, it did what it said on the team. Not a lot of kills, but it was kind of okay. At first, I thought the protagonist was the same protagonist from the first movie. And I'm not sure if they, I'm still not sure if they are, because basically everyone in this movie, except for like a couple of Pacific Islanders and a couple of uh, like literally one Asian person, Everyone else is blue-eyed, blonde-haired, white lady, and it starts to get a bit like... Sorry, are you supposed to be the same character as blonde-haired, blue-eyed? Are you a recast of the same character from the first movie? And they all have, like, pretty normal human names, and you're not gonna sit there and go, Legendary Shark Survivor from Reef 1, Nicole, or whatever. So, they're just... I'm just sat there like... If it is the same protagonist, she is the most unlucky person on the planet because she managed to get fucking bullied by shark, two sharks in her lifetime while out at open ocean who for some reason unnaturally waited and that's a very funny thing too. Oh great, I'm getting wombo combo by potions. Probably my own potions too. I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna win this, this is so the shark acts in a way that no shark could ever shark. In the first movie they go, this is unnaturally aggressive for a shark and try and explain it in some way and like actually like acknowledge the fact the shark is acting in an odd way. In this one, the shark literally follows them. They stay on an island for what I assume must have been at least a couple of hours while they're trying to help this child who got attacked by the shark and they go, we have to sail, we have to get to another island where there's help, but there's only this rickety-ass boat. You're thinking, oh, okay, that's how I'm going to work. Let's see, motivation for them to keep going. Back into the water, because there's a time constraint, like the kid is covered in blood, you need to save the kid. But like, that means the shark followed them nearly, like, viciously attacked a child, waited around that island for a little while. They did not get back into the water, really. They just went straight onto a boat, and it followed the boat. And it's like, how does the shark know it's them? Why is the shark following specifically them? Why has he got a... This shark has a vendetta, and this shark is psychic because they're not bleeding, they're not in the water, they don't look like a seal, they're a fucking boat. The shark doesn't even know if there's someone on the boat. But it magically never attacks unmanned kayaks that they let drift out to sea. It only ever attacks boats that they're in. And I'm thinking, like, I don't think sharks' sense of smell or any of their senses allow them to detect whether or not a boat has got people in it, it can eat. Also, sharks don't like eating people. <laughs> like, fuck. Oh, 
I'm gonna try and get first on this, but once again, I've been bodied by the bully AI, which is like every time you make a mistake, the AI punishes you horribly by smashing the bomb up your asshole and going, you're now eight, because you took a corner slightly wrong. You went on the grass, you hit a wall. Body, 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 body. I'm just rolling thunder combo you to death. You just say, oh. Bully AI. This chicken can drive! Oh, yeah, and uh, hard mode, they can use clocks and everything. It's kind of fucked. But seriously, this this movie, it was like in some cases a little tone deaf, and I'm kind of nervous that this is just like the attitude people who live in Australia have, where it's just like traumatic experiences happen all the time, and you just have to deal with it and learn to live with it. And I'm like, fucking hell. But anyway, yeah, like the shark is psychic. The shark knows to wait because it obviously would be able to understand. Aha! They went on land. Well, they'll have to leave land soon, because, like, no, humans are land-dwelling creatures. <laughs> like, you could just stay there for fucking weeks. What's it gonna do? Starve to death waiting for this specific protagonist to go back in the water. And honestly, if, if it was a through line between both movies and I was this protagonist, I would never go in the water again. <laughs> There's so many water-based problems that happen to her. This old chick still got some metal in him. Oh, I have lost this again. Fuck. Why is hard mode hard? Is it because it's hard? Fifth. Oh man. Well, I ground out some coins. Maybe I can get lab assistant later. 